Hello and welcome to the 22nd lecture of our course on photonic devices and on this lecture we're going to keep on talking about photo detectors and photodiodes and we're going to discuss PIN and avalanche photodiodes as well as some basic circuit configurations used to polarize uh, the device in order for it to function as a photo detector. Of all of the types of detectors that we have discussed in our previous lecture, photoconductors, phototransistors, photomultiplier tubes, um, photodiodes are the ones that are most often used in optical communication. So we're going to focus on these devices. And they are usually placed in a context of a circuit in which they are reverse bias, right? What essentially you have is a diode which is reverse bias. So if you look at the IV characteristics, typical characteristics of a diode, we are on this region here in which the voltage applied in the diode is negative, right? So you are in the reverse bias region as opposed to what happens in the case of optical sources. And what are the detection mechanisms, right? So in reverse bias, let's recall that the current is usually very small. So we're talking about the saturation current which is, you know, of the order of microamps or even less. And what happens is that photons impinging on the active region, the PN junction depletion layer, will generate electron hole pairs. So this is a depiction of what we have, right? The diode is reverse bias. The depletion layer is larger than it would be in forward bias. And the anti-material, it's at a higher electrostatic potential. The electric field therefore is in this direction and the current that flows through the diode is the saturation current which is essentially due to the flow of minority carriers so um, holes in the n-type material so holes in this region and electrons in this region will diffuse across the junction to form the saturation current which is pretty negligible but if you illuminate the active region or the depletion region, right? So if you shine light on this region with a given power or intensity, as we've seen, if this light is at the appropriate frequency or wavelength, carriers will be generated in this region. And well, if as we said, there is an electric field here, then the carriers that are generated inside this region will move due to the action of this electric field, right? Essentially due to this uh, voltage source here, which is putting the diode in reverse bias. So holes will move uh, in this direction. Holes will move to the right and electrons will move to the left and the reverse bias current will increase uh, in proportion to the optical power impinging on the depletion region. So again, photons impinging on the active region, which is the depletion layer generating electron hole pairs. And so the electric field in the active region induces carrier motion, uh, generating a reverse photocurrent, which is proportional to the optical power impinging on the diode. And the, the example that we've illustrated right so far is the PN junction diode, so the regular diode, but other types of diodes, such as PIN diodes, in which you have an intrinsic material in between the P and N type materials, and avalanche diodes are more often used, and we're going to discuss them next. But in all of these configurations, the diodes are reverse bias, so uh, without uh, shining light on the device, you have a very small current flowing through the device, a reverse current, which is the saturation current. And as you illuminate the device, essentially the depletion layer, or the active region, additional electrons and holes are generated increasing this reverse current, which is no longer equal to the saturation current, but increasing this reverse current in proportion to the optical power which is absorbed by the device. Now it's a good idea to take a look at the band diagram of this structure, right? 
So let's recall that if we take a look at the band diagram of a reverse bias diode, what happens is that due to the fact that the p-type material is now at a more negative electrostatic potential than the n-type material, it will have a, a greater energy, right? Because the energy is essentially the charge of the electron, which is a negative quantity multiplied by the voltage. Since the voltage is negative, the p-type side will be at a larger energy, and therefore all of the band diagram of the p-type side moves up, and in the Fermi levels, no longer align right so without you know the reverse bias here the fermi levels of the n-type material and the p-type material would need to be aligned because we've applied this potential which is negative relative to the n-type material here the whole band diagram of, of the p-type material rises up in energy the fermi levels no longer align and you have a, a difference in the fermi levels here which is equal to the charge of the electron multiplied by the voltage which is applied and because of this increase in energy of the p-type side with respect to the n-type side the bending of the bands become even more pronounced so you have a even larger potential barrier here but as we've said if you shine light on the device you will have photons with energy hf impinging on the depletion region and these photons can generate extra uh, electron hole pairs inside this region so of course with uh, without shining light the concentration of electron hole pairs would be considerably smaller but as we shine light on the device you have extra electrons and holes and these electrons and holes will move through the action of the electric field. So the electrons which are generated uh, will move in the direction opposite to the electric field. And if we look at this in terms of energy, the electron is going downhill in terms of energy. So it will have no problem going downhill, right? And the holes will move in the direction of the electric field. And if you consider that this is the energy diagram for electrons. What can be considered to be uphill for electrons is actually downhill for holes. Then the holes are also moving downhill when they move to the right. Does this make sense? There can be a reverse photocurrent due to essentially to these carriers generated in the process of light absorption here. And this photocurrent will be proportional to the power, to the optical power impinging on the depletion region. So the photocurrent IP is a reverse current. You do need to put the device in a condition of reverse bias. But on the other hand, the photodiodes that are, which are usually used in application requiring high speeds are PIN devices as opposed to the device that we've just looked at. So in these devices, you do not have a regular PN junction. What you have is a sandwich uh, in which an intrinsic material, an intrinsic semiconductor, is built in between the P-type and N-type materials, right? So why is this necessary, right? In the PN junction, the common diode that we've been talking about, all of the photons which impinge on the P-type and the N-type regions do not contribute to the photocurrent generation. Only photons impinging on the active or depletion layer contribute to this current. And this is essentially because there is no drop in potential or electric field in the P and N type regions. Essentially, you will only have an electric field in this region right here, the depletion region, because again, you have the immobile ions here and it's clear that you'll have an electric field here but in the n-type and p-type material you do not have a net charge you do not have immobile ions all, all of the positive ions here are balanced by the electrons which are the majority carriers on this side so this material is essentially neutral in terms of electric charge right for every immobile ion you have an electron this this material is neutral and the same thing happened here right for every negative uh, immobile ion on the p-type side you have a hole and the material is also neutral 
so all of the drop in potential happens in the depletion layer and all of the electric field will be concentrated on this region right so if you shine light on the n-type material and the p-type material there will be no practically there will be no electrostatic field in this region or this region right there will be no electrostatic field on both these regions because these regions are neutral the drop in potential and the electric field will only exist in this region therefore charge you know electron hole pairs which are generated here and here will not be put in motion because there's no electric field and if they're not put in motion they cannot contribute to the reverse photocurrent on the other hand photons impinging on the depletion layer the active region in which there is an electric field do contribute to the photocurrent but on regular pn junctions the depletion layer is pretty small right uh, so the, the the length or the the width of the depletion layer is typically around one to two micrometers which is not a very large and because this length is pretty small of all of the light that impinges on the device a large fraction of it is wasted on the p-type and n-type materials so using an intrinsic layer in the pin diode right the intrinsic layer right in between the p and n type materials has the purpose of increasing the size of the active region which as we saw for pn for a regular pn junction uh, is pretty small so the intrinsic region is responsible for capturing light and in this region the electric field is actually present so this region which is responsible for capturing light uh, in which the electric field is actually present becomes larger than in a regular pn junction so what are we talking about well let's look at this depiction here so we have a pin uh, diode in which you have the intrinsic region here right intrinsic material placed between the p type and the n type materials now the immobile ions in the p type and n type material and the depletion regions will also be there on either side of this device as well but in between these immobile ions you'll have the intrinsic region so you have a structure which resembles uh, somewhat a capacitor right you have positive charge here and negative charge here but this intrinsic uh, material which has a much greater length than the typical pn junction depletion uh, layer length is right so because you have positive charge on one side and negative charge on the other side you do have an electric field inside the intrinsic region and the carriers which are generated here will be subjected to this electric field right but this is a much larger uh, region than you know just the depletion region of a pn junction and that's why the efficiency of this device with in which an intrinsic layer is placed here uh, can be made much greater okay uh, we have not talked about this resistor which is placed right here as we can see the the diode is reverse bias so the p-type material is at a more negative potential and the current will flow in this way as we would expect right and the reason you know to put it here is so that you can convert this reverse photo current which through Ohm's law will generate a drop in potential. Uh, it, it will allow us to convert the photo current into a voltage. So essentially the purpose of this resistor here is, is that. If we look at the band diagram of the PIN diode now, we see that the, the region where you have the in which you have the bending of the bands is now much greater. And the carriers which are generated in the process of absorption which is illustrated here right the electron hole pair electron in the conduction band and hole in the valence band uh, will still move downhill but now you have a much larger active region okay and if we look at the electric field distribution it would look something like this right again you have a, a, a very large uh, electric field in this in the active region the electric field will actually rise uh, along 
the space charge regions which is this region and this region and will be constant along the intrinsic region with a very large value right right in the p and n type semiconductor sides so in the p type and n type semiconductor sides which correspond to this side and this side the electric field is is pretty much zero we can also note this aside from the arguments that we've uh, used before from the fact that the Venn diagram is flat in this in both these regions right and if electrostatic potential is proportional to the potential energy this means that the electrostatic potential will also have this behavior it will also be constant here and here and if you do and if you do not have a drop in electrostatic potential then the electric field is is, is zero but the electron and the hole which are photo generated here uh, will be subjected to this electric field which will basically be you know towards the right here and therefore they will go downhill and contribute to the photo to the reverse photo current now the fact that the region that can effectively use to capture light and generate electron hole pairs which will contribute to a photo current is larger the fact that this region is larger uh, increases the gamma factor right the gamma factor uh, was defined as the fraction of the absorbed photons which did not contribute to the reverse photo current and you know we mentioned that uh, the fact that some of the photons which are transformed into phonons and also the fact that if some of the photo generated electrons and holes would later recombine inside the junction also contributed to this all of the fraction of photons which were lost because they were not absorbed inside the active region right the, the region in which there is an electric field also contributes to the gamma factor and since we're increasing the size of this region right the, the region that has an electric field in the PIN diode this will increase the gamma factor and therefore increase the quantum efficiency of the device as well aside from this the junction capacitance is also decreased right because we're increasing the effective length or width of the active region and since the capacitance uh, grows with the inverse of this length therefore the junction capacitance will in decrease as well right so essentially because we're making this the dimension here w much greater than we would have in a regular pn junction in the analogy with the parallel plate capacitor uh, this means that the capacitance associated with the junction will decrease and as we've said in order to make faster devices we need a small junction capacitance so this is a positive aspect as well right in order to obtain faster devices and the most common configuration used in optical communications are centered around 15-50 nanometers uh, PIN diodes with substrate illumination using indium gallium arsenide films to form the active region is the most common configuration so basically in these devices you have indium gallium arsenide films intrinsic films forming the active layer which are deposited on an n-type indium phosphide uh, substrate and on top of this you have the heavily doped p-type indium phosphide film which is deposited as well to form the p-type material so essentially the device looks something like this you have an n-type substrate uh, additional n-type material indium phosphide layer but the intrinsic layer is actually indium gallium arsenide so you have a heterostructure here as well right and on top of this we have a, a p-type indium phosphide material and you know metallic contacts and in order to polarize the diode but this is a, a very typical configuration for a device and since the substrate is pretty thick around 60 micrometers you would expect that it would absorb most of the light right because this device is back illuminated so it's illuminated through the back and you know the substrate here is 
has uh, typical thickness of 60 microns, but uh, the fact that indium phosphide, which the material used for the substrate as well as, as, well as the B-type layer here, has a larger band gap than indium gallium arsenide means that this substrate right the indium phosphide material will be transparent to the light that's absorbed in the intrinsic layer so basically what we have here is for the indium gallium arsenide we have a certain band gap so let's say you we have the the valence band here and the conduction band up here for the indium phosphide you have a we have a larger band gap so if a given photon can be absorbed here in the active material the indium gallium arsenide layer generating an electron in a hole right so a photon with energy hf this same photon would not be able to be absorbed uh, in this indium phosphide uh, material because it would not provide enough energy for the electron to overcome the forbidden gap in this material does this make sense so therefore this material would be transparent to these photons at this specific specific frequency and corresponding wavelength so this is a clever architecture for the device because the substrate is transparent and you can use back illumination in order to to build the detector so just to have an idea the band gap of indium gallium arsenide so just to have an idea the gap of indium phosphide is 1.35 ev and the the band gap of indium gallium arsenide is almost half this so 0 0.73 ev and that's why the substrate in all of the indium phosphide layers are transparent to light at 1550 uh, nanometers so if you if you convert this to frequency and find out the, the energy you would see this energy would be smaller than the gap energy for indium phosphide now an additional detail is that an anti-reflective coating is deposited on the back of the wafer right the illumination region so we can you know um, a multi-layer stack here designed in order to transmit uh, light at the wavelength of 1550 nanometers which is the center of the C band in the third window of optical communications can be used in order to increase the transmittance at this particular wavelength and av avoid reflection so less light is wasted uh, due to this process. So indium gallium arsenide is used for wavelengths between 1300 nanometers and 1550 nanometers for different reasons actually, right? The quantum efficiency is greater than 70% and the responsivity is also larger than in most other semiconductors in this region of the spec. Also this material presents the advantage of having a very large electron and hole mobilities as well as a high saturation velocity which is the maximum drift velocity that the carriers the electrons and holes can acquire inside a given semiconductor uh, when subjected to a high intensity electric field right so this the, both both these things lead to a low transit time which again is the time that it it takes for the carriers to to cross the active region and therefore this lead this leads to short response times right the capacitance of the junction is also increased as we've mentioned so it's around 0 0.1 uh, picofarads 100 femtofarads which is very small as well so the rc time constant can be made pretty low as well 